Lineker is facing criticism after calling on the government to scrap the plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda. He and other celebrities signed an open letter calling for politicians to come up with a fair new plan for refugees. The Defence Secretary Grant Shapps questioned whether Lineker should be expressing his political views. Take a look. I just think Gary Lineker should get on with commenting on football. Uh, and stop meddling in these other areas. It's all very well signing letters and areas that you you know uh, like to sort of uh, commentate on, but I would suggest focusing on football would be a better solution for him. Let us take a further look then with what happened here. And it's the second time. So this is the big question for us, Gary. And the question is, should he? Let's have a look. Stop speaking out. He looks like he's saying no. Well, he's, he's shaking his head. Gary, time to stop speaking out. That's the question. So after Shap said that, Lineker says, that's a tad rich coming from someone who can't even stick to one name. Four chaps, Shaps. Shaps has used pseudonyms like Michael Green in the past. So he's, he, he, you know, he's taken a bit of a kick at Shaps. And then we hear from the next chairman of the BBC who didn't like the attack on Shaps. I do think, however, the more recent uh, tweet that uh, Mr. Lineker, uh, in which he identified up to politicians does on the face of it seem to breach those particular guidelines. So that's Samir Shah and the second politician was a guy called Jonathan Gullis. Again, little kick from Lineker at him. Maybe not quite a yellow card offence, but, but <laughs> edging towards it. And of course, this all takes us back to what happened in March, didn't it, with match of the day. So let's remind ourselves, it starts with a tweet from the then Home Secretary, Sue Ella Bradman. She says, enough is enough, we must stop the boats. Lineker responds, good heavens, this is beyond awful. He gets challenged and he doubles down. He says, there's no huge influx. We take far fewer refugees than other major European countries. It's an immeasurably cruel policy using language that is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 30s. People went crazy about that. And the BBC then had to step in. This was Penny Mordaunt. Labour are borrowing from the Gary Lineker playbook. They are a party. They are a party of goal hangers and the occasional left wing striker. He doesn't like that either. He says, thank you for mentioning me in your clumsy analogy. I'm just happy to have been better in the six yard box than you are at the dispatch box. So because he's got this, this battle going on with her and with Suella, the BBC gets stuck in and they say, right, you're stepping back from match of the day until we can decide how you use your social media. Then all the commentators follow. Steve Wilson says, we've decided to step down from tomorrow night's broadcast, essentially supporting Lineker, Jermaine Defoe, star commentator. Yes, I'm standing down. So then they air match of the day for only 20 minutes on Saturday with no commentary or anything. And at the end of it, George Lineker, Gary's son, says, I'm proud of the old man. And actually, although the BBC adjusted its social media rules, Lineker ended this whole incident feeling rather supported and... and looking rather unrepentant. And so, Rebecca Jane, it's happened again. Oh, I have no time for the guy. If you want to be a politician, be a politician. Until then, keep your mouth quiet and start talking about your football. So can we not all have views on things? You can I mean, have... You can't, there are lots of people who watch this show listen, are not politicians. Listen, Gary Lineker is not just having a view. Gary Lineker is using his platform. And, you know, this new social media policy that the BBC have got actually clearly states that they can't endorse or attack a political party. All he does is attack political parties, actually. So you can't have the best of both worlds. You know, he's supposed to be impartial. And if you want to defund the BBC... Maybe then I might have a bit of a different opinion. In the we, meantime, no. We did contact the BBC on whether there would be an inquiry into these latest tweets and, and whether they broke the guidelines. And they said we are not going to comment on individuals or indeed individual tweets. While the guidance does allow people to talk about issues that matter to them, it's also clear that individuals should be civil and not call into question anyone's character. We discuss issues that arise with presenters as necessary. So, Kevin, I don't, they don't like him attacking individuals. That's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe in free speech? Oh, don't start this. I'm just asking, do you? Don't, do you? Of course I believe in but free speech. But not Gary speech. Lineker's. We, no, 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 no. He's, he, because he's saying he something you don't to... like. No, so you agree the free speech as long as people agree with you. He wants to be a politician. Be a politician. 
wonderful, fantastic. You are on a platform that is funded by the British public. But we're, we're have... presenter. Exactly. He's not. He's forgot that. It'd be very different if it was Jeremy, somebody in news, current affairs, your other hat at the BBC, your, your very successful, popular Radio 2 programme in another part of your life. It'd be very different if you were making those views. He's a sports presenter. It's not as if he's saying somebody's run down the right wing and he's fallen over faster than Suella Braverman. He's not saying that on Match mm. of the Day. Look, I can see why it is awkward for the BBC. It's because he's their best paid one. Yeah. That's the, he's their best paid and presenter. I, and I thought Samir Shah coming in as being grilled by MPs, going to come in as the new chair of the BBC. He was, he was very considered about it. He's saying signing the Rwanda letter doesn't breach the guidelines. And that letter was also signed, by the way, by Brian Cox, the actor. And Lord General Dannett, former head of the army. So there's pretty mainstream views on Rwanda mm. now uh, that Linnick was expressing. It's because he's got into spats with these three MPs, but they started them. Now, if he'd have picked on those MPs, Grant Shapps, and I, Grant Shapps is free to say what he said about Linnick. Uh, Jonathan Gullis is free to say what he said about Linnick. Uh, Penny Mordaunt is free to say what she said about Lineker. But if they have a pop, don't whinge when somebody uh, okay. comes back. Let's go to Peter in Lincolnshire. I, I gather you agree with Rebecca, dear Peter. I do agree with her. OK. Everything? And for, well, wasn't it when the World Cup was going on, the politicians said, we think England should get out, should pull out because of all of the problems. With Qatar. And he said... Keep out of keep the politicians out of football. <laughs> so then he goes and starts going into football from football into politics. And as Kevin has just said, you can't say one thing and another. What would happen if you on this program said a BBC program that was getting shown tonight was a load of rubbish, blah 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 blah? Would the same thing happen to you? Would you be told shut up or fired, or would you be told That's the tricky sorry? One. No I mean, problem. you know, we do do a programme slot where we regularly critique uh, shows on other channels, so we've probably done that. So, but no, listen, if I, if I came out, I don't think, you know, part of my job is to not have political views. It's a small price to pay to, for the best job in the world. So I don't mind that. And I genuinely don't really take strong positions on things. So um, I don't have Gary's issue, but he feels strongly about this. And as Kevin says, he's a sports presenter, not a news presenter. So the comparison with me is wrong. And Peter, isn't it right that, you know, in the interest of him being authentically Gary, we hear what he's thinking and what he's saying? But yes, he's saying what he wants to say because he's in that high profile place. No. When Match of the Day was cancelled because him, Ian Wright, who does football on ITV, why he's on BBC, I don't know, um, and sort of Alan Shearer, they all left and everybody said it was a better one because they didn't have all the blab uh, in the well, middle I of it all. Well, I watched it and it was so It was awful. You watch you watch a football match to watch the football. Uh, you don't want to know that Gary Lineker of six, ten years ago would have done this. And OK, would have all, right. Peter, all right. Peter, Peter, I think you've misrepresented what somebody said about Qatar and politicians and football. But I would agree with you if on Saturday night, match of the day, he says, right, before the highlights, uh, I think you know, the government's completely wrong on Rwanda. Now that would that would be wrong, but he you did really... do that in, on Qatar. He attacked Qatar on TV he will... for their for their LGBT yeah. position. Right? And, the, and the only way he can, I think, justify that, or the BBC, which allowed him to do that, because that would have been scripted and cleared in advance. True, because it was quite a monologue. Is when he go, goes to the US, he's going to have to for, for the next World Cup somehow critique the US as yeah, well, well. The number of people killed, the death penalty, whatever. But the, the fact is, though, Peter, he doesn't have these views because he's on the BBC. He has these views and is in on is, the. Is BBC. this convincing you, Rebecca? Is no. this convincing you? Here is the thing. I genuinely, of my half hearts, believe that Gary Lineker wants to be a politician. You know the reason why he doesn't do it? Because I think he cares more about politics than about football these days. Why he doesn't do it is the £1.3 million that he's paid, he doesn't want to give it up. And that's where he just wants the best of everything. Uh, Joe in Sheffield, what do you think? Hello. Hi, Hello. Um, I think that being a TV presenter shouldn't, you know, not give you the right to have a political opinion. 
he keeps it separate. And, and, uh, and I don't like football. I have no interest in it whatsoever. But I, I agree with his opinion, so I'm probably a bit biased. Uh, but he should contain his language sometimes, maybe, to express his opinions. Uh, the World War Two comments weren't very respectful. I don't yeah. think that, that was the right thing to say. But but you've just shown something saying that, that a politician was saying meddling, meddling. Well, he has, you're right, he's had a bit of a kicking from politicians. And then the question is, you know, if Grant Shapps decides to, t you know, take a swing at Gary, Gary, I would think, has a right to take a swing back. Exactly. But I, I, I think that's, that's where Grant Shapps has started the fight in the saloon. Kwame's in London. Do you think he should stop talking, Kwame? I don't think he should. I mean, he has a view. I don't see what a hoo-ha is, you know. He he presents sport. He doesn't present news. So the traditional um, rules of impartial, impartiality shouldn't necessarily apply to him. The only people... The only people, the only reason why people criticise him is because they don't like the content of what he's saying. Mm. If 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 he was on the other side of the argument, they'll they'll be they'll be saying, "Ah, freedom of speech. He has a right to speak." Well, let, out let's try people. let's try that with with Rebecca because that that is the suspicion that he gets criticised by people who just disagree with him, <sighs> like yourself. Well, I think that if there was other people that were as outspoken as what he is in his position, he sat on a platform that's been paid for by the BBC and the British public. It's a little bit different in this circumstance. You know, what Holly and Phil and anybody else who's on other different channels who, you know, if they want to be... Yeah, but he does get public money, fan. Kwame. So I suppose the if the public money gives him a profile, should he not comply with the public's general view of this stuff, which is 50-50? Um, no, I mean the, the fact the fact that he's paid by the public doesn't oblige him to stay, to to keep his opinions to himself. I mean that's neither here nor there. He's paid to present sports. Exactly. To, sorry, to present sports. That, uh -huh. That's what he is. He's not a journalist. So yeah, I, I mean, just you could say the same. Chris Packham is a similar. I think a very similar case. Chris has just very very deep felt beliefs about the animal world and he'll never he'll never be anyone other than Chris Packham. Now, yeah, so, you know, the BBC's employed him on that basis. Yeah, so, some I agree with Chris Packham, others, others yeah. I don't, but I yeah. think he should be sacked. Now, I tend to agree with what Lineker says, but I think Kwame's point, uh, you should be free to say it. And I, I look at the case, say, of Alan Sugar, who presents The Apprentice. For, for instance, he, he, he posted a tweet, Photoshop picture of Jeremy Corbyn next to Hitler. Quite clear what he was doing. He later deleted it. He then he then posted a picture uh, where he suggested, with words, that the Senegalese football team at a World Cup reminded him of bag sellers on a on a beach. It was clearly racist. He subsequently d deleted it. Now I don't think he should have. I disagreed. I don't think he should have said those things. But I didn't want him sacked. And this is this mm. is where the key to free speech is. It's people saying things you disagree with but you defend their right okay. to say it. Thank you, Kwame. And in Hertfordshire, do you think he should keep speaking out? No. Uh, uh, Gary Lineker's a football commentator. He's sick to what he knows. Stop wasting taxpayers' money on this overpaid posh boy. Suck him today. Get Sack rid of him. him. Okay. There's more important things to talk about in the country than Gary Lineker. He's an overpaid posh boy, milking our money for two and a half hours a week of money. He gets paid a fortune to do it. It's got to stop. Uh, and he, he came from a working class home in uh, Leicestershire. I he's, tell he's, us where he, he came from. He, he is. He's so you're calling him a posh he's boy. He's, he's incredibly well paid, but I don't think he is posh. Well, maybe he's become yeah, posh through money. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or drinks it's, his tea with his little fingers. Well, I don't know. Out, yeah. it's, but, um, and he was a great striker, wasn't he? He was a brilliant footballer, yes, he was. And that's the key, that's the only thing that matters here. It's, it's like criticising Eric Clapton without mentioning his guitar. You know, Lineker was a brilliant footballer. And, yeah, and I suppose that's why we want to hear what he thinks football. about football games. Yeah, uh, you should stick to his football. OK, that's all right, it. so... And, and if you disagree with him, why don't you just ignore him? Why don't, why don't you just leave him and... Because my husband to... has it on every Saturday night. Yeah, well, that's all right. He's not talking about this on a Saturday night. Hey, here's one for you, Anne, because this, this goes the other way. Marcus Rashford, who is the Manchester United player, had a yeah. massive campaign for the government to provide free school meals.
Do you think he was with it? And obviously he's not a BBC presenter. Was he within his rights to do that, do you think? Yeah, because he was helping the children. He was feeding the school children. OK, because Lineker would probably say that he's helping people in the same way. But it's not. It's not helping the politicians at all. It's criticising the politicians. Yeah. He should keep out of what he doesn't know. OK, OK. The, Rebecca, what about the Marcus Rashford example? Do you say... I mean, I don't know what the view on this is. Stay on, on the football pitch... No, he Stay was. Stay out of politics. I I agree there that he was helping. He was helping people. Gary doesn't help anybody. Gary just champions his ideas, feeds a load of nonsense, whatever he thinks and whatever he believes, and that is it. He right. doesn't actually help. He, he helped when he hosted in his own home a refugee. He put his house where his mouth is, and he's help, He's helping people who are migrants. Lovely. Now, Carry you might, on. No, but, he's, but he is helping people. You may you may not mm. like these people coming to Britain. You may agree with Rwanda. That's you know that's that's a legitimate political point. But why do you want to silence somebody who is saying the opposite of you? Why not engage them? And that's it. It's, I it's don't want to. I don't want to silence Lineker. him. I just want him to step down from his position and go and be a politician. Okay. If he cares so much. Terry in Blackpool is Rebecca Jane Wright. Is she he should step down and go into politics. Uh. He should shut up. Shut up. Yeah. No, sorry, I wasn't talking to you. I was yeah, keep, <laughs> <laughs> keep going. You, you suddenly fell silent. Yeah, so, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, he should shut up because if every high profile sports commentator, etc., etc., had done what he done, where would we be? Everybody would be arguing and bickering all day long. <laughs> that, that's that's yeah. Just, he should stick to what he's well, he's, doing. Well, he's, he's BBC, remember. So that, the, the, the issue is he's BBC. BBC is funded by the public, and therefore do the public have a right to expect the football commentator to be quiet on stuff that isn't football? And fundamentally, that's that's the issue. And you know what? He's not going to stop, is he? You, nope. could, you could tell. So they're going to have another... They're obviously heading towards another moment where they have to confront it. If they, if they bow to Conservative Party politicians and others clamouring for it to be confronted. Like, I think, I think he's careful. If he'd, have, if he'd initiated those attacks on those, or the criticism of the politicians, I think it would have been very, very different to him answering them, mm. which is what he did. No, Responding. where did it all start? In the very first instance, where did it all start? Well, I think we'll it have to ask Mr and Mrs somebody, Lineker. <laughs> it didn't start by somebody in Parliament going, ah, oh, Gary Lineker, let's no, pick you're, on him No, you're today. absolutely right. It started with Suella Bradman tweeting about the boats and he got he flared up. And that was she had not attacked him at that stage. You've got a very narrow view of who can get involved in politics. I want everybody in the country to be involved in politics. Everybody in the country can have a view and everybody in the country should be able to air their views. You keep thinking, if you want to be involved in politics, get into Parliament. Politics is about more than Parliament. It is about more than Parliament, obviously, but it's also not about taking £1.3 million pound a year of the public money. That's okay. a different issue let's, on how much he's paid. Let's go, let's go. Thank you, Terry in Blackpool. Nice to talk to you. We've we'll got a Blackpool story later on about a big car, Terry, you might enjoy. David in Berkshire, hi. Hello. Hi. Right, I'm trying to guess which way you're going to go, David. I reckon you think he should be allowed to speak out. I think you've been speaking to the fella I spoke to before I came on. I haven't, honestly. <laughs> I, I reckon I can guess just from the I way you say hello. I absolutely think that he should be able to put on his own personal X account whatever he likes. And everybody's entitled to an opinion, and it seems to me that the politicians don't like it because they don't agree with them. And they've spent £290 million pound what are they going to ship about 100, maybe 200 people to Rwanda? That is, an, that is a big, that's about £2.9 million pound per person. <laughs> well, they would let you put it like that, that. yeah. I think the way that the, polit the, the Tory party has, in the last 13 years have made such a mess of this country that they could maybe do with somebody like Gary Lineker to give them a few good ideas. Mm. Would, if you were a genuine question, if you were Labour, would you start to approach Lineker and say, look, we, we need talent? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, he, he might not be Labour. I don't know. Palmer, he? I don't know what his politics are. I just, uh, I think that he's entitled. Personally, I agree with him. I think they could be spending the money far better on, like, on their catchphrase of stopping the, the boats. They could spend two hundred and ninety million pound a lot more wisely than they have. Mm. But uh, I think he should be entitled to to put on his X account or Twitter or whatever it's called. I should think he should be able to put whatever, whatever he, he likes. likes. He's not. Thank He's you, not David. being offensive to anybody. Thank